Hello YouTube, today we have ourselves a Sanyo TV, doesn't really show up very well in the light, it's a Sanyo, um, model number is, let's have a look, we've got a LCD-40XR10F, now I've reset everything to factory settings so we can start from scratch here, um, don't really know, I guess store would look better right? But um, anyway, I've worked out by trial and error how to fix with this TV how when you go into HDMI, if you have a computer connected, it just looks like garbage. And I guess most people might not notice this, but it, it really looks terrible once you see the difference after fixing it. Um, this is absolutely factory. I've just done a reset of the EEPROM so you can see what it looks like off the bat. And... Not only do I think it's way too bright by default, but you also have this kind of stuff going on. See these circles? They shouldn't be there. If we look at the reference image on a computer monitor, you can see that it should just be looking like that. That's, that's the reference there. But of course, that's not what we get. We get this weird post-processed output. So I'll go through the steps to fix it first, and then I'll have a bit more explanation. So if we go into the source button here, and press source, and then we press down 2580 in a line, that opens up the factory menu. So we open that up, and you see that all of these TVs uh, seem to have the same software. All these like cheapo rebrand with some brand name, you know, TVs. They all have the same software menu. So this might work on other TVs and it might stick. The problem with this TV is all the settings that you change in here do not um, stick. So they um, they reset after you turn the TV off, after you change input. Um, I've heard online that other people have better luck and it actually does stick with other brand TVs. Um, but anyway, it goes through the steps anyway. So, first thing is backlight, way too bright. Also, probably shortens the life of the TV. You're probably best off having it like that, which I think is a lot more reasonable anyway. I think they crank the backlight up, not only for a bit of planned obsolescence, but also just um, so they look better in the store. So, we set that to zero. Again, that just resets. Um, the first thing we can do, though, before we even go into the factory menu, is there's a zoom button. Might be called something else on a different brand TV. But um, it'll come up with these different zoom options. Now if we um, go all the way to the end here, one to one pixel mapping, you'll notice straight away that these pixels are now perfect, or nearly perfect. You can see that on this box here, there's still a little bit of something going on there. It's like some sort of post-processing going on in the corners there. And you can also see with this, this text, it's not quite right. Probably hard to see through the camera. But if you look at that text, it's there's there's some sort of border around it or something. So let's let's get into that factory menu again, see what we can find. So we go in here, we do our 2580, get into the factory menu. Now we've set our backlight already from that ridiculously bright backlight, which will probably shorten the TV's life by like 10 years. We go other settings. Q map adjust, and then we just want to hold the up arrow and just go through all the way to VIP. So these are, I don't know what VIP means. I guess they're the they're the bees knees of TV settings. I don't know. But if we go all the way to the top of them, there's actually one to toggle all of them on and off. So we toggle that off, and you'll notice straight away when I do this, you use your left or right arrow keys to toggle them on and off. Um, when I toggle this off, though, you might notice some big difference there. You can see. That all that post-processing that makes the image look um, quote-unquote sharper, I suppose, um, you know, it sells more TVs or something, goes away. And you're, you're left with the actual image, nearly. You'll notice it does look a little bit washed out at the moment, which is interesting. But that's okay, because if a couple settings up here, we have SRAM 1 and SRAM 2. Now, if you just press left once, so there's actually like six six different options in these menus... Um, you'll notice if I keep clicking, there's all these like different ones that you can't read because unfortunately, um, it gets cut off at the end there. But you basically, when you're at post-scaling, you press left 
until it switches to in sync for TC, whatever that means. So right at the end of those two options. So you're at post scaling, you go left. And you want to do that with this one as well. So left to in sync six. And you'll notice that now that, that other weird post processing has gone as well. If I switch it back, you'll notice there's a bit of blur there. But once I switch to that in sync on both options, that is now the actual HDMI input that the TV is receiving without any post processing. Now, I guess for most people who just watch free to air TV or Foxtel or whatever, maybe it makes scenes look better or something. But I definitely would prefer the the what I'm actually inputting to the TV to come out and not get all blurred and post process to make it look better than um, other TVs in the store. So they're the options you set. Unfortunately though, making these options stick is basically impossible. Um, possibly on other TVs it is possible with this one. Um, I can't work out how to do it. If anyone knows how to get these options to set permanently, please let me know. I've tried holding OK for five seconds. I've tried the EEPROM in it. I've tried the shipment. I've tried just clicking all these different options in the hopes that I don't brick this TV in the attempts to fix this. And... Yeah, it just it just doesn't it just doesn't stick. So once I turn this TV off and turn it back on, you can actually see the difference. I'll switch it off here. Okay, and we'll switch it back on again, just for a bit of science. And you'll see straight away the difference in image quality when it resets all those settings back to the factory defaults. And you can see straight away. It's all washed out again and looks like crap. And then I will switch all these options back. And you'll see here that now, like, I, I don't know if you can see the difference, but I can see it straight away. And it looks absolutely perfect. And I don't know whose idea it is to apply all this post-processing to the output of the screen. Um, I mean, the average buyer of a TV like this probably doesn't really care, but... Uh, if I'd, I'd rather what I send to the TV get outputted. But anyway, if anyone knows how to make these settings stick on a TV like this, that would be amazing. I have two of these TVs, and every day when I turn them on, I have to get into this factory menu and turn this backlight down because it's just so bright. That probably kills like 10 years, takes 10 years off the life of that backlight. And yeah, other than that, once you, uh, once you fix... The software issues these TVs have, they're basically like picture perfect. It's just all of the crap that these this generic software, all these options this generic software has, and I guess Sanyo decide that they want to turn them all on to make them look better than the other TVs when people are comparing them in store. Um, not great when you take one home and you just want to plug a computer into it and read text and stuff because goddamn does it look terrible. Anyway. Thanks for watching.